Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, actually, just before I forget, next some there will be a share me at such time this Tuesday. I'm conscious that unfortunately I cancelled a, a couple of Tuesdays, but there will be a share this Tuesday. And next uh, next Sunday there will not be a share. Um, have a, a simple out of town, so uh, next Sunday there won't uh, won't be a share. Um, I'll try I'll try and send more sources uh, me at such time before then because I'd like between today and Tuesday to to get through uh, pretty much where we're up to with the with the sources. Um, so Titus Divaramaskan with an Indian. Um, basically grapples with um, Rother's view as, as interpreted by Abaya in the relationship between what defines a Kali with respect to Tuma and what defines a Kali with respect to uh, Shabbos. Now, there are certain respects in which it's almost a given that Tuma and Shabbos are not identical. At the end of the day, Tuma has various uh, various specific rules uh, around it. But in other respects, the rather in, in a nuanced way, makes a comparison between Tuma and Shabbos. And we're trying to work out what the parameters of this, we, Tosus, the Rishonim, are trying to work out what the parameters of this comparison is. And we're trying to follow in their footsteps and, uh, and understand it. So Tosus says that, um, that the explanation of uh, Rother's opinion is that since um, ship, since a uh, um, since the broken machat is not a kedi with respect to tuma, even if you are miyachid it, why not? Because odom zor kolabein hagrotos, it's 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 rubbish. It's chucked out. It's 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 junk. Um, therefore, with respect to Shabbos, it also isn't a Kedi. However, with unformed needles, as yet not completely manufactured needles, gome um, uh, of needles, since with respect to Tumor, Yichud would help, therefore, with respect to Shabbos, it's a Kli even without Yichud. In other words, Rava doesn't mean to suggest that Shabbos and Tumor are identical, even, even in the area he makes a comparison in the Gemara, even in the areas within which we can compare them. All he means to say is that if with respect to Tuma, Yichud doesn't help. You can't just, an individual can't come along and say, I now want to use this as a, a Kedi. It fundamentally isn't a Kedi, it's a stone. You don't just decide in your mind that a stone is going to become a, a paperweight and expect it to now cease to be Mukta or to be Makabal Tumor. The, the broken machat is, is a stone. It becomes completely removed from KD use. If I do something with it, if I, if I actually begin using it, maybe that's different. You can't just in your mind think, oh, I'll continue to use that. So since Yichud doesn't help with respect to Tumor, therefore it is Mukta with respect to Shabbat. However, uh, an incomplete needle is not rubbish. It's not garbage. It's not thrown out and and uh autumn so color being advertised not something you just discard as scrap metal um it's just waiting around to to eventually be used in some shape or form with respect to tumor it doesn't matter that it's waiting around to be used in some shape or form it isn't yet a kd and therefore it's not macabre tumor but with respect to shabbos the whole point of shabbos is that something which is uh there for human use is by is by default uh, a kedi and not mukta. It's, it's the servant of human beings. It's the utensils of human beings. So that's enough servitude with respect to shabbos that that it, it's it's a potential kedi with respect to tumor yichud would help, and therefore with respect to shabbos it's not uh, mukta. So the translation of rava according to Tosus is that since with respect to tumor yichud would help, i.e. it's a kli in waiting. With respect to Shabbos, that's enough not to be mukta. That's Tosus's reading of the Sukkah. And we discussed this uh, more or less, that's where we left things off on the last uh, in the last uh, shir. Now, just to spell out on in Tosus's way of thinking, we, we could have gone down a different avenue. You could have understood that when Rava says, um, middle Indian summer love monohu, after Indian Shabbos love monohu. What he means to say is that um, with respect to Tuma, it's not usual to be miyachid it, and therefore with respect to Shabbos, it's mukta. Tosus says more than that. He says with respect to Tuma, you can't be miyachid it. 
So there is a, there's a chiddush in, in Tosis's mathematical reading of the Gemara. In other words, Tosis is doing a bigger picture thinking and smaller picture thinking. There's a broad message of Tosis, and then there's the specifics of how Tosis punches the, the maths of the sukkah, calculates the sukkah. I just want to explain this. The broad message of Tosis is that when Rava says, since with respect to Tumar, it's not a KD, with respect to Shabbos, it's not a KD, what he, and when, when with respect to Tumar, it is a KD, with respect to Shabbos, it is a KD, what he really means is, of course, Tumar and Shabbos behave differently. With Tumar, you need actualized KD function, that you've actually been miyachid it, and with Shabbos, you need even potential yichid was enough, that's the, the nature of the relationship. He doesn't mean to say they, they're, they're synonymous, they're, they're identical. There's not an a, a identity between the two. All he means to say is that, that with Tuma, if Tuma has potential, then with Shabbos, that's enough to make it not mukta. That's the big point of Tosis' reading of the Gemara. The nitty gritty of his reading, he says that the point is that with respect to Tuma, now Tosa says, with respect to Tumor, you can't be miyachid it. It's 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 odum zarka ben it's, it's it's a stone, and therefore with respect to Shabbos, it's mukta, um, as opposed to the gol mekadim, which with respect to Tumor, you can be miyachid. Therefore, with respect to Shabbos, it's not mukta. Tosa could have said a, a softer version of that. He could have said that the the needle that's thrown away ben the broken needle that's thrown away ben it's is not normal to be miyachid it. Um, you, you not normally miyachid it, therefore with respect to Tuma, with respect to Mukta, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Mukta, whereas the Gome is normal to be miyachid it because it's, it's standing to be made into something, and therefore with respect to Tuma, it's, uh, um, uh, with respect to Shabbos, it's not uh, Mukta. So Tosa says a, a more extreme formulation than mathematically was necessary in the maths, in the calculation of the sukkah, because evidently that's what Atosa thought was reasonable. So, so again, to, the, ju, just to summarize the, the pathway of Tosa's, part one, or conceptually speaking, part one of Tosa's chiddush, in a sense, is um, there isn't, in Rava, there is not an equation, the, the relation, when Rava says there's a relationship between Kedi of Mukta and Kedi of Tumor, he, what he means to say is, that as long as with respect to Tuma, it's a potential KD, with respect to Mukta, it's an actual KD. That's point number one. Point number two is, what do you mean with respect to Tuma, it's a potential KD? By us, Tosa says, in, in, Tosa says a second point, which means, could Yichud help or not? Tosa could have said a softer version of that, which is, is it normal to be Yachid or not? But that's not what he says. I'm belaboring this point because I didn't put it on the source sheets because I just wanted to avoid confusion. But there is a tosis in uh, Zavachim, somewhere else in Shas, where tosis indeed says the softer version of it. So it, it's part of the family of the view of tosis. You see both Pshatim sort of emerging from the same yeshiva, the same base of Medrash, but there, there's a distinction in how far tosis goes. Our tosis teaches us a chiddush lahalacha, seemingly, that you can't be miyachid with thought alone, a broken uh, needle. Um, and that's the critical point. You can't be miyachid just with thought alone, with respect to tumma, and therefore with respect to mukta, it's mukta, as opposed to the golem, which golem, which you can be miyachid with respect to tumma, and therefore it's, it's a not mukta already. Now it's a clear with respect to mukta. Person Zvachim says a softer version of that. He says it's not normal to be miyachid with respect to tumma, therefore with respect to tumma, mukta, it's mukta. But with golem, it's normal to be miyachid, and therefore with respect to mukta, it's, it's a kedi. There's the two variants of this. The reason I'm belaboring this point is because this is very relevant in the halacha, which is, is our taste just tells us, seemingly tells us chiddush la halacha, that the broken machat, you can't be miyachid. Whereas the softer version doesn't say that, it just says it's not normal to be miyachid. So halacha la if you have a broken needle, according to Rava, can you be miyachid it for, for coat's removal? Right? Can you keep that needle for coat's removal? Or is that ridiculous? The needle has become a piece of stone it doesn't make sense to be miyachid unless you actually do something with it. You have to do an action or or or, or, or the like. You can't you can't just be miyachid. You can't just decide. You can't point to a stone in your garden and say this is this is a paperweight. It's not. It's a stone. There's there's hundreds of other suitable stones around. It's got in no way is it uh, a kadi in in, uh, in 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 any way at all, unless you begin using it. You polish it up and put it on your desk as a paperweight or the like. You can't just be miyachid with thought alone. It's a stone. So tosus our tosus understands that the Odom the, the, the Zorokal of Ben means it's become a stone. It's, it's completely removed from the realm of Kedem, and therefore Yichud uh, wouldn't help. 
Whereas the softer version of Tosus is, is simply talking about normality. It's not normal to be miachidit, but if you chose to, you could be miachidit back as a kedi. It, a broken kedi is not completely removed from being a kedi. It's, it's a broken kedi. It's not normal. It, the point of the Gemara is it's so broken that it's normal to discard it. But if you chose not to, you could choose uh, to be miachidit back into being a kli. And uh, again, I'm not going to go through the Mount Comers now, other than to simply say, and this translates to a, a machlok between the Pasuk and literally on the, on the page of the Shulchan Aruch, as it were, whether a broken machat can be, uh, maybe I did print it uh, in the Mishnah Brewer. Uh, I don't remember actually, I'll, I'll double check. If not, I'll maybe I'll post the source on the WhatsApp group just so people can see for their own interest. But can you be miachid a kedi uh, on Shab- before Shabbos um, of this broken needle to be used as a kites remover, or is that ridiculous as being the of stone as a paperweight? It's just no, it's not a cane in any way at all. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so the, 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 I'm not going to go into that scenario of the yichud to the floor of the sukkah because I, I don't want us to go off topic. I'll discuss it with you afterwards. Um, but other than to say that's not a case of yichud kli, it's yichud floor, it's making something into a floor. So on the contrary, if anything, it's stopping it being a kli. So you have mats on the floor, and before your intention on sukkahs, um, it is something sitting on top of the floor. When you decide to leave it on the floor, it's a type of it's, it's now becoming earth and it just becomes part of the ground now. So in a sense, it's the opposite way around. But uh, well remembered, and I'm happy to talk to you uh, about that afterwards in, in a little more detail. Um, can you be miyachid a, a kli on Shabbos? So the, the simplest answer is no. The whole point of mukta is that it, it, whatever functionality it, ha- it comes into at the beginning of Shabbos is, is what determines whether it's mukta or not. Um, every time I want to use a mukta item on Shabbos for a permitted activity, I'm I'm wishing to use it as a, as a, a type of utensil. And nonetheless, that's the whole point that it's uh, of why it's mukta. So um, I have a a, a stone. Um, the stone is mukta machmas gufay, so it's not a kli at all. Now Shabbos comes and I want to use it to uh, for, for a particular purpose. The whole point of mukta is I can't make it into a kli and therefore it stays as mukta. So the most extreme form of mukta, certainly the answer to your question is no, you can't be mukta on Shabbos. That's the whole point of mukta. What about the softer forms of mukta? So a hammer, a hammer is a kli, but it's a kli shem issa, which means I can use it l'toreach gufa, I can use it for a, 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 a mutta use because it's a kli, it's only made for all that. that uh, well, at least according to the Maskan of the Gemara, that's, that's what we're learning in Dafkuf Gimel Amadalaf at the top of the page that a, any kli has latent within it uh, any any use I can squeeze out of it. And therefore, the hammer is mukta. I can't just move the hammer for no reason but because a hammer is a kli shimlach of this, it's designed for knocking nails into walls. If I decide to use the hammer for coconut cracking, then it's, uh, I can use it for that use. It still remains mukta. I can't move it trivially for no reason, but I can move it in order to crack a coconut because it still has, that use still remains as a permitted use. And that's what we began with by saying, don't think about mukta as just being the nature of this object. Is this object mukta or not? The better way to think about it is, it's mukta with respect to its primary use with that of a pen, but I can use it with respect to a secondary use of, of using the pen for whatever, you know, for whatever I want to use it for. Um, on Shabbos, the circle, I can use the hammer for, for, for coconut cracking on, uh, on Shabbos. So in that model, we now have a question. Can I, on Shabbos, be miyachid the hammer as, a, as, as my new coconut cracker? Can I take it out of my toolbox and DIY kit and put it in my cutlery drawer as my, you know, I'm, I'm now signed up to a new fattish diet where I'm going to have coconut every day. I therefore want a dedicated hammer for coconut cracking. I want to put it in my cutlery drawer and... Uh, and begin only using it for that. So that's a repurposing of it. And I want to repurpose it as a Kalisha Malach to the Heta so that I can just move it around willy nilly like any other, any other piece of cutlery. So could you do that on Shabbos or not? That's a very interesting question. Because the whole logic of Kalish of Muksamach is that, it, of, of, sorry, Kalisha Malach to the Issa, is that it has a Tzorah Gufoy latent in it that can use it to break coconuts on Shabbos. So can I even repurpose it on Shabbos? Or is that called giving it a new functionality or not? Now, I've, I've dealt with your, that, I've spelled out your question at length, 
because this is preparation now for the run that we're about to learn, which sort of is dealing with this with this uh, question in, all, in an alternative reading in Tosis. But at least in Tosis, the answer would be no reason to think you can do that. Mukta is mukta. A stone is mukta, and therefore you can't repurpose it to make it a KD on Shabbos. A hammer is mukta because it's a type of KD, so you can't repurpose it, you would think, to make it a different sort of KD on Shabbos. You can use it for a mutter use, but it, it can't cease to be mukta. You can't just trivially move it because it's a cliche from an Issa. Who says you can repurpose that on Shabbos? The Ron is going to argue in a minute that no, even a cliche from an Issa, since it's a kli, it isn't like a stone and you can repurpose it on Shabbos to become a cliche from an Issa. And in a moment, we're going to see uh, that argument of the of the run. Yeah. Um, it, that gets us into Shivrei Kalim, and it, it, with Shivrei Kalim, there's one of there's several combinations of of what that <laughs> of Shivrei Kalim would be. There are Shivrei Kalim which become stones on Shabbos. There are Shivrei Kalim which have the continued original function, and there are Shivrei Kalim which have a new function. But since they were Akkadian and they're now Akkadian, arguably wouldn't be Muks and Shabbos, which gets us back to Tosas at the beginning of the period. Yes. The repurposing is not repurposing on the period, but not a key on Shabbos before Shabbos. nonetheless, since it's become a stone, it ceased to be Akkadian. The, the, the whole, the sod that says that if it goes from being one utility to another utility, it still remains a Kli and Kainam Omid for any possible use you can squeeze out of them, including their use as broken bits, wouldn't apply if it became a stone on Shabbos. But we will see when we look at the run in, in a few moments more, more, more around that. Because really that sort of Tosis is, it ties into the continuation of Tosis where, where he begins one worrying about Shabbos. So we'll, we'll get to that. Is there a okay, bit, so, well, sorry, can I, is there a bit of um, a counterintuitive thing that you're saying something which can be used for Sorry, something which is muksa for you know you can't do it for something ossa, you can use for something mutter. But something which isn't a kali like a stone, you can't use for something mutter. I mean, to me, it just seems counterintuitive because surely, you know, you got a stone, you never use it for any for any ossa malocha, right? So kalvachami should be able to use it to something mutter. No, because the, the point of a stone is it's not a keli at all. It's not only made for any, it's not only made for human use. It's, it's just, it just sits there being itself. It's, it just exists. It, do, it, do, it isn't a, uh, a, a, a utensil for human beings. It's not the servants of human beings. And therefore to begin using on Shabbos is giving it a, a, a functionality of yesh me'ayin, of, of, of something or nothing. Mukta is its own rules. It's not a malacha. But mm. it's interesting that it works in a, in a sense with uh, there is a creativity concept surrounding it, which is and again I don't I don't want confusion here. Malux is not one of the Lama Teskanachas; it's its own domain with with perhaps elements of Darius, elements of Drabon to it, and there's several reasons why they why Mux exists as a Gazera. But the 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 legal mechanism of how Mux works, we, we're ignoring sort of reasons behind the Lachas, are that. To create an, a new functionality, you can't on Shabbos because it wasn't the stone in no way was only made for that. The logic of the hammer is it always had this latent use. So it was a keli, and keli are only made for human use. They, they are our servants, and therefore the mutter use is almost only there. Whereas the stone has, uh, it's not, it's not only for anything. It's, it's surely by happened. definition, but if you can, if you feel like it, use a stone as a paperweight or whatever it is, a doorstop. Then why can't you say it was only made for that use? It's always, it's always... not only made for anything. It's there's not only made for anything. It's it's there's, there's billions of stones in the world all lying around doing nothing. So they can all be made. they can all be used as paperweights if you want. They can all be used. They can, for but they're not only made for that use. That's the point. That they didn't have pre-existing that that potential. That, that it, there's a potential in the sense that they can be used for it, but it's, it's not inherent in them. You don't walk around, wander through life looking at every stone as a potential paperweight. It's not, it's not something that's already there in existence. It's not only made for that. Whereas mm -hmm. a hammer, the chiddush, one possibility is, you, how dare you use the hammer for, for cracking coconuts? It's, it's a hammer, it's there for nails. That's the earlier top of the world. That's at the bottom of Kuchaf base on the base. At the top of Kuchaf Gimel and Madalaf, the Gemara's Machadish, that all kanim are only made for, uh, for potential, uh, for any potential use. And therefore this muk to hammer is is a is a is a, is a coconut cracker in waiting 
and therefore uh, you can use it as a code for you. Thanks. Okay. All right. I'll have a class one question on on your your comparison with the coconut cracker and the hammer. You're saying in Tosfot that presumably you could not repurpose it, but Tosfot seems to be saying that with respect to Shabbat with the the needle, the fact that you could be miyached is now enough to already take the needle. So surely, what with the with the hammer, it's already miyached for something. So that seems to me like it's more likely you could go and take it. No, Tosfot says that since the needle with respect to the, the golem needle, since with respect to tuma, you could be miyachid it for use. Therefore, with respect to shabbos, is already a kedi. In other words, it's, it's only made for kedi use, whatever kedi use I can squeeze out of it. And therefore, it would be a needle, which is a klitsch of mm -hmm. with the heta of Torah of Gufo to use it as a coat, coat extractor. Yeah. Um, Tosis doesn't say that on Shabbos you can dedicate it as a coat extractor and make it cease to be muktzah at all. Ah, uh, okay. Right, because yeah. you can't use it for nails in the first place. Okay, yeah. Maybe. You can't. You can't. Well, it's a needle, so you can't use it for sewing in the first place. It doesn't have yeah, to yeah, yeah. use. Okay. Nonetheless, it's it's only made enough for its primary use that it's a key in waiting and therefore behaves like a klishim lachto le issa. So again, just to try and put this in, 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 in relatively concrete terms, we're, we're dealing with, with, there's a sort of philosophy or metaphysics in a sense, we're, we're learning halacha, we're learning law, but there's a, there's a concept here going on behind this, a, a, a lomdos, which is at what point do scraps of metal leave the status of stone? At, at what how, but at what point does something become formed enough and potential enough that it shifts from being a stone to being a, a kadi? So Tosis's view is that in Rava is that a broken, in our Tosis, is that a broken needle becomes scrap metal and therefore is a stone and ceases to have any clear status to it. But an unformed needle is enough the servant of human beings that with respect to Shabbos it would behave like a klisha malachta rather than scrap metal, even though Rava acknowledges that in, with Hilchus Tuma it's not enough just to be the servant of a person, it needs to be an actual keli and therefore needs actual use. Rava never meant to say that Hilchus Tuma and Hilchus Mukta are identical. Hilchus Tuma needs an actual functioning keli and this isn't one. Hilchus Mukta needs that it's the servant of a person rather than just being its own entity and a potential a needle midway through manufacturing process is already on its way to becoming a KD, and therefore with respect to Muxa as the servant of a person, a broken needle is scrap metal and therefore has become an honorary Evan and is completely removed from human functionality. That's, that's the summary of what our Tosis, uh, our Tosis says. Um, is, this, is this clear? Is this, yeah. Okay, so that, that's Tosis. Let, let's move on um, and, and at least try and cover the run today. So this is the... Uh, the Chiddush Aaron, which I printed on page, I think I printed, yeah, I printed on page two. Um, uh, and I, I think I mentioned last time, it's, it's, it's the Miyachas the Ritzvah, it's the, the mission that through the generations was described to the Ritzvah, that we now, we now believe is the, um, is the run. And um, the run says a, a, a different Mahalach over here. Um, and he says that, actually, let's just read the run inside, rather than me giving my, my summary to it. In um, it's, this is the top of page two. Akati Maya Hanilon. Neymar mid an Indian summer love monon in Shabbos Nami love monahu. So he's basically asking, what is Abaya's answer for Rava? At the end of the day, in other, the Gemara is dealing with a problem that Rava seems to say, Tuma equals Mukta. And we know that's not the case because we ask a question from it from a Braisa. And Abaya is, is answering no. Rather, only meant that in a certain specific way, but but the Gemara never quite spells out how how Abaya's answer fits back in what Rava says, where he did say that Tuma equates to Mukta. So Tosa's answer to the question was that potential of Yichud with Tuma equates to Hilchas Mukta. If it if it potentially could be Tommy 
to Yechud, then it won't be Muktzah. And if it potentially can't be Tommy with Yechud, or it's unlikely to become Tommy, then it won't, then it will be Muktzah. That was Tosas' answer. When Rav said Tuma equals Muktzah, what he really meant was potential Tuma, Yechud, that was helpful Tuma, equals Muktzah. The Ram asks really the same question. So, so what did Rav mean when he equated Tuma with Muktzah? And he answers Yeshlam in the second line in the Ram, to Enochanami, it is correct that some of the Shabbos Kiyadadun Inu, they are like each other. Um, in what way? Because Miyad Kishu or Miyu Miyad Kishu Machshiv Machshiv Oleo Litloi, as soon as he has intention to take it, Kedeli Shlamish in order to use it, have it a Kli, and now becomes a Kli, or Mutzal Otaltal, and now it's Mutzal to move it, it's not Mutzal. Who are the Nami, and similarly to the Achamikan after this, have it a Kli Nami, Linyun Tumma. It would also be a Kli with respect to Tumma. I will call Shri Khashavalov for anyone who didn't think of it. The Nogaboy, Tumma, and Tumma touched it, Tahar, it would be uh, um, Tahar. But if he's a key Katani, Mutter the Tatar Shabbos, when it says it's Mutter the Tatar Shabbos, it means Dafkil the Serif Gufa, anyway, you're moving it with Serif Gufa. Shum Zahim Mashava, that very intention, Mashrele Mana makes it into a Kedi. I will say, Kumo, Loi, and him came Khashavalov, but Tilla. Okay. So the run is saying as follows. The run first of all is saying that there is a complete equation between Tumma and Kedi, according to Rava. Rava, Abayu's genius of his answer in Rava is that we can explain the, 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 the source that seems to say not like that. And yes, Kedi, Tumma and Mukta are, are identical <coughs> with respect to what the, the journey towards Kedi status or the decline from Kedi status. Again, it doesn't mean with respect to other halachas are identical. And I, I, I said this right at the beginning of the sukkah. Everyone agrees there are unique halachas with, with Tumma to do with material that things are made from that isn't rather really relevant with respect to Shabbos. Should to create, no one would say that Chalabur is Mukta, even though it's not Tumma. That's not, no, no, one, no one ever bothered even asking that on Rafa. Everyone understood that there are unique halachas about Tumma. But w- with respect to our topic, the functionality elements of of the halachas, with w- which functionality, when do you cross the threshold on the way up to becoming a kedi, the, the birth of kedim, and when do you lose a decline enough from functionality to cease to be a kedi, the death of kedim. In, in that area, um, we, we're grappling with what the relationship between Tumar and Mukta is. Tosa said that Abayah's answer is they are not identical Tumar and Mukta. All it means is there's a, there's a certain sort of relationship between the two. The Ram's answer is they are identical when, when the birth of Kedim is identical, when, when you get enough functionality to be a Kedim with Tumor, you have enough functionality to be a Kedim with Mukta. And when you lose the death of, of Kedim is also identical. And when you lose the functionality of, of with respect to Tumor, you lose the functionality with respect to uh, Kedim. <laughs> so it is a fact, says the Ram, that this um, uh, golem, this unformed needle, um, is, is Mukta, because it doesn't have KD functionality. And it's not Makabal Tumma because it doesn't have KD functionality. And therefore, if you just wish to move the needle around, that's not what's allowed. That's never what the source meant. It isn't allowed to just move it around. And if you want to move it to Sarek Makoma, you couldn't move it around because it is, it is an, it's, it's, it's an event. It's not a KD. But the Chiddush is that if you, if you begin, if you want to use it, the Gufa, you're making it into a KD by so doing. And at that point, it becomes a KD with respect to Hilta Shabbos and a KD with respect to Hilchas uh tumma. so it, it's a different sort of heta of Torah Kufa. It, it, it's it's not normally when we use the terminology of moving something to Torah Kufa, we mean it's already a kli it's just a kli shim after this but you can move it to Torah Kufa. here when it says you can move it to Torah Kufa, it's through the very act of using it to Torah Kufa, it becomes a kli because what is a kli if not something that i'm using and therefore by using this kli i'm, I'm taking it out of scrap status which is a, 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 a mukta into a kli, and therefore that would help with respect to Shabbos mukta, and with respect to Tumar comes in a moment, and, and with respect to uh, um, and with respect to uh, Tumar, with respect to Shabbos and with respect to Tumar. So it, in the meantime, don't understand the heta here of Torah Gufa to mean that it's already a kli, but you're allowed to move it Torah Gufa, because then you will think that you can also move it to Torah Makoma, and you can't because it's not a kli at all. The, the point of the Torah Kufa, of the allowance to move the Torah Kufa, is because with the act of using the Torah Kufa, it becomes a Kli. That's the, the, the Chiddush of the Ram. And therefore, according to the Ram, there is indeed a complete equation between um, crossing the threshold of functionality to become a Kli with respect to Tumma and with respect to Mukta.
A hundred percent. The very act of using it is is not. Yeah, it doesn't mean that you have to conscious. There's nothing conscious yeah, to do. Yeah. The act of using it is is enough consciousness to do that. I'm I'm using it as a KD. What what else? I've taken this unformed needle and made it into a uh, make made it into a uh, a KD by so doing. That's that's the act. What else is a KD but using something for for my needs? Yeah, called the Schrodinger needle. Yeah, <laughs> indeterminate status. It's, yeah. It's neither or both, but once he's demonstrated what it is, it's clear what he was thinking all along, and therefore it gets one state. I hear, but I didn't. You have to say that. Um, I, 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 I'm, okay, let's try and put this in, 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 uh, in clear. I mean, you're saying it, it, it's a latent key. I, I agree with that, but you're saying it now needs to be pushed one way or another. I don't see evidence of that. It's a latent key, and it could, it could carry on through its life in a perfectly contented manner as, as a non kd but it, it's close enough to being a KD that just to, by dint of using it, that, that shifts it over the border into, uh, in, into, into being a KD. So this is the, the view of the, the run. Um, we've run out of time, but basically speaking, just in terms of the program going forward, um, we're going to look at a third reading in the sugya, which is the view of the Me'iri, who uh, makes a distinction between the birth of Kadim and the death of Kadim, and he thinks that's where the symmetry breaks down. And we'll look at the Miri. I then printed a run on the riff that appears to be in the Miri's camp, in which case we effectively have, have a disagreement between the run in his commentary on the riff and the run in his own Kudoshim. Um, I'm not going to do this inside because I, I think it will be a little overwhelming. Maybe we'll touch on it, maybe not. But basically, whether the run on the rift means like the Miri or means something else depends on quite a close reading of the run. And that's where the Maram and Masha and Maram Shik and uh, Masha get into. So if you have time, have a look at it. It's very interesting. If you don't, don't worry too much. But basically, we're going to emerge from the Sukya with three readings of the Gemara. And we're going to label the three readings Tosus, the with two variants, the this, this subtle nuance and Tosus, the run and the Miri. And whether the run on the riff, where he fits in, is, is sort of a bonus point for those who are interested in, in, in dwelling on that. But that's going to be the program of uh, the next year, Mitzvah Shem. Um, and I hope maybe next year we'll also have a look at the Hassan Sova. So if you're short of time, don't worry about the run on the riff and the Masha and the Maram Shik and everything. It's very technical. Um, if you have extra time, do it. But definitely please have a look at the Hassan Sova. That's, that's very important. Thank you, everyone, very much for joining. Thanks.